Shifting our focus to the UK for now. Is Rishi Sunak's new foreign minister, David Cameron, a Chinese stooge? Is he merely Xi Jinping's pawn? What makes me ask that? Well, for starters, Cameron helped a Chinese firm land $3 billion in investment. Let me just break it all down for you. Cameron was paid by a Chinese company to visit Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Which firm is it? China Communications Construction Company. It was launched by President Xi Jinping. It is funded by the state. So why did it send Cameron to the UAE? What was the former British Prime Minister tasked with? Well, to lure in investors. And for what exactly? For Port City, Colombo, a part of China's Belt and Road project in Sri Lanka. David Cameron got involved with the project in January when he visited Sri Lanka. There he met the project's director, Yang Liu. Cameron was seen shaking hands with Liu and posing for photographs. In fact, Cameron also accepted a gift from Liu. And a few months on, Cameron was paid to fly to the UAE. How much exactly? Reports say some $210,000. And as for the project, China had already invested $1.4 billion. It was now on David Cameron's shoulders to bring in more dollars. And Cameron did not disappoint Beijing. He spoke back to back at the Ritz Carlton in Abu Dhabi and the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. He implored delegates from West Asian sovereign wealth funds to pour money into the port. According to a leaked footage, which we could not independently verify, Cameron said he was struck by the immense opportunity of the project. Not just that, he has also endorsed and promoted the project on social media, calling it a sea of opportunity that will help in building bridges and bringing greater prosperity for all. And what was the result of Cameron's lobbying? As I told you, West Asian investors pledged $3 billion, a whopping $3 billion just off the back of Cameron's visit. That's what the reports say. None of this has been publicly announced. The funding remains subject to legal agreements. Now, there is nothing new about Cameron's enthusiasm as far as China is concerned. When he was the British Prime Minister, he touted a golden era of relations with China. From sharing a pint with the Chinese President Xi Jinping to trying to set up a UK-China investment fund, Cameron has shown disproportionate interest in China. And the love-in seems to be mutual, by the way. When Sunak appointed David Cameron as his foreign secretary, Chinese state media heralded his decision. It claimed Cameron's appointment will breathe new life into the China-UK relationship. Last week, hundreds of Chinese government officials and entrepreneurs paid to meet David Cameron. How much exactly? Close to $10,000. $10,000 for a three-hour meeting with the former British Prime Minister. Some Chinese businessmen later enthused that uh, it was money well spent. Last year, Cameron was involved in another such China-organized study tour offering VIP access. He also charged almost $15,000 for a picture and dinner in Shanghai. You see, since he left politics, Cameron was not obligated to disclose his business interests in Beijing, but now he is back in the parliament. He is the UK's premier diplomat, and now he cannot afford to have any vested interests in China. The chair of the Labour Party has called for Cameron to disclose all of his financial interests in the country. The new foreign secretary is under the microscope already. Criticism has started mounting with regard to Cameron's support for the Chinese port in Colombo. Lawmakers fear he is pushing for a development that could become a Chinese military outpost in the Indo-Pacific. And speaking of criticism, it's not just Cameron who is facing flack, it's also the Prime Minister of the UK, Rishi Sunak. He is now facing even more challenges from the heavyweight candidates in his party. Sunak is trying hard to send immigrants back to Rwanda. But his plans were spoiled as the Supreme Court ruled his policy unlawful. It also said there had not been a proper assessment of whether Rwanda was safe. And the Prime Minister then promised to introduce emergency legislation 
confirming that Rwanda is a safe country. And for that, Sunak is now considering to block a key human rights law. But the thing is, he does not have some of his own party members' blessings. And this includes the newly appointed Home Secretary, James Cleverly, Justice Secretary, Alex Chalk, and the Attorney General, Victoria Prentice. They are opposing Sunak's decision to move away from the European Conventions on Human Rights. You see, there is a split within the Tories at the highest level. Sunak is trying to appease the right-wing members after sacking Suela Braverman. He is trying to become even more radical than her, but it does not seem to be working out for him, clearly. The British Prime Minister seems to be flailing around. How will he keep the favour of his party? We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.